we're going to segue off to the next topic. This one was a uh, pioneered, I would say, engineered, better term, by Rudy himself. He, uh, we're going to discuss the top five henchmen of the NBA. Now, if you listen to the term henchman, you're going to, Donald, what does that mean? It means rough and tough. It means aggressive. It means mean. Pit bulls. It means that little thing that bites you on your leg and won't jump off. Uh, your child can be a henchman. My son is a <sighs> henchman. Uh, I've had a couple of nieces and nephews. Henchmen. Your mailman can be a henchman. He just throws your packages wherever the fuck he wants. Anyone can be a henchman. But in this case, we're going to discuss Rudy's top five henchmen in the NBA and why. Rudy, the floor is yours. So th- th- I thought this would be fun. To- huh? Let me name my five first. I know okay. You're- no. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. At number five, I'm going to go with Udonis Haslam. I'm going to go with somebody who's, you know, in this era – well, close to this era, who who gonna give some credit for doing all the dirty work, knocking people out, taking care of his guys, making sure nobody gets effed up. And if we want to take it there, if you go in anywhere in Miami and you with UD, you're not fucking with LeBron, Wade, or nothing because UD gonna make sure that everybody's safe and and everything's taken care of. So I'm gonna go with UD at five. Anybody opposed to that? No, no, okay. And then after that, I think it's just a bad boys list. I don't like <laughs> what what are we talking about here? We got But you know what? At number four, actually, I don't I won't consider him a henchman, but I'm gonna say that somebody that you're not fucking with, bro. Um I don't think he bought enough or did enough, but I know a lot of people was not fucking with. I know he was at the free throw line and he told he told uh the Marcus Cousins, don't fuck with me. Bullies get bullied. I'm gonna go with Zebo at four. At number three, I'm going to go with John Sally. John Sally at number three. Just take care of what he need to take care of. Make sure that nobody mess with Zeke. I mean, at number two, I'm going with Rick Mahorn. <laughs> this is a bad boys list. At number one, I think we all know. No, did I did I skip somebody? You you, you may have because I mean I know you're gonna go to Bill Lambier right here. I'm guessing, but oh, um, because you said the bad boys I'm list. I'm go to Oakman, Oakman oh. one. So okay, you know, it was actually supposed to be Lambier at two, Mahorn at three, Sally at no Sally's not in it. That's what it is. Zebo's at four, Giannis oh. at five. My bad, Sally's not in it. Let him go do his bad boys movies. My bad. I'm sorry, Sally. Um. I got uh, Rick Mahorn at two, and I got, no, Oak at one. Man, Bear at two, Rick Mahorn at three. Zebo at four, UD at five. And I'm not putting Rodman in there. I don't think Rodman was a henchman. I think Rodman was just an irritator. He just got on the people's nerves, and you just really didn't like him. And he just did irritating stuff. He grabbed your balls, might have rubbed on your butt. <laughs> if you want to lie. It's, I, 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 I just know he's just an irritate, irritating player. You just, um, you want him on your team, you might want to hang out with him after for a little bit, not the whole night, just a little bit. But I wouldn't consider him a henchman, so that's my top five right there. I'm pretty sure Rudy could dive into them more because he's from the 1930s. Yeah, um, I, I actually like that list. Um, you, you, oh, I, snap. I like it. I like it. I mean, I don't. I agree with some of it. I mean, I, if I made it a top ten, I probably had a lot of these guys in there. Okay. Um, but – um. I want to start off first with I thought this would be a fun topic yeah. because we're in an era of basketball where they don't exist anymore. And people think like a guy like Draymond Green is a, a henchman or a goon. Draymond Green won't bust a grape. He won't bust a grape. Let someone get in his face, face to face. He will fold. He wants to grab people from behind and sucker punch people and whirly punches and kick people in the balls over and over again. That's not a henchman. That's a fucking pussy. He's a fake. He is what I call a fake goon. Another guy who's a fake goon is Kevin Garnett. He always picked on guys smaller than him. Let him pick up. He never. Now, he made Chris Bosh scared of him because Chris Bosh is a little bit soft, but he wouldn't pick on Udonis Haslam like that. 
He wouldn't go at Shaq like that. He wouldn't go on any big dude like that. He was always a real tough guy with the little guys. Another guy that I thought was a little bit fake, you know, tough guy was Rasheed Wallace. He was tougher than Kevin Garnett, but he was just a big mouth. Not a lot of – he like if there was a guy in those Detroit Pistons teams from the, the early 2000s that you didn't want to fuck with, it was Ben Wallace. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not- Ron, Ron Artest found out the hard way. I'm not fucking with Ben. You don't mess with Ben Wallace. That said, I don't think Dennis Rodman is a henchman either. I think he's just an irritating motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he got under Alonzo Mourning's skin. He was mm-hmm. irritating. He wasn't a guy who was going to get into a fist fight. He would try to make you want to fight him mm-hmm. and then walk away laughing at you because yeah. you just got ejected. Gotcha. And, and he's still in the game. Like, I got your ass. But, he, you know, yeah, ba- yeah, basically. This was tough for me. And I know I'm taking fucking forever. But I'm going to tell you right now, my number five is a tough, light-skinned dude who... Jeff Curry. I knew it. He, he, he fits that level of, like, goonish-type behavior on a court. Matt He's Bonner. a t- tough son of a bitch. Matt he, drove, he drove 95 miles to go punch Derek Fisher in the face because his kids called him. Matt Barnes is a tough motherfucker. Like, he is a, I mean, he ain't big. He's six eight, but he's sl- he's skinnier than I'm 255, 260. He's, what, 210? But that dude was tough as shit. Like, he had no fear of anybody. I have so much respect for that guy as a ball player because he wasn't the most skilled. But, man, he got the most, and he was tough. He, he would not back down from anybody. So, yeah, I call him my number five henchman. Yeah, you, you figured it out as I was talking about. Number four, I'm back and forth on this one, but I got Charles Oakley at number four. Charles Oakley was that, that he's like the last of the enforcers type of guy because you'll never see another one like Charles Oakley now, like ever. Got, the, I read something today where he got into two fist fights in one day. In the street, like, what are you doing? He got into a he not he beat up Judge Mathis at a bar. You know the TV judge? Mm, yeah, he beat him up in a bar. <laughs> like, what the hell is like this guy? And you see what happened in the in the arena. I mean, he was a scary dude. He was Jordan's protector mm-hmm. in the eighties. Yeah, and that was a big thing when they traded him. You know, he became Ewing. Guy. And, and, you know, he became Ewing's guy. But you know what the funny thing about it was. The New York Knicks had two of those dudes. You're going Mason. And that's my and that's my number three. Anthony Mason. Uh, you know what? I, Anthony I, Mason is the scariest motherfucker to ever play in the NBA. I, oh my God. When I did my list, because I had to come up with it quick because it was really Rudy ideal right here. I said, Anthony Mason. And I'm like, oh. If I'm walking through a dark alley. I want Anthony Mason next to me because that dude would scare any just by how he looked. He yeah. looked petrifying. Yeah, yeah. His eyes, he looked like his eyes were always bloodshot. Like, though his voice. <sighs> like, oh my. And then yeah. when he played for the Heat, I love the guy when he's playing for the Heat. But, but imagine the Knicks had this dude and Oakley at the same damn time. Hey, hey I agree with you because him and Tyrone Hill was not going to be in any beauty pageants. None. <laughs> None, but that dude and I and you know the funny thing was I had a, my first year travel team played against his team, played yeah, against yeah. his son. He was the coach. It was hilarious. I mean, I'm meeting this guy like guy's the size of him. He's a monster, but he was petrifying to look at. Yeah. I mean, on the floor, like okay, you could have a layup. If I was me, I'm like I'm not even getting you. And he's so big and strong, like it's just like petrifying. Hey, jump, jump shots today. <laughs> oh my god, like bro. Number two is Bill Lambeer. Bill Lambeer didn't care if he got beat up. Yeah, that was that's gonna, the funny thing. That's what he I didn't care. He's one of them. Hit me, hit me. He didn't care if he got beat up. He didn't. He got into a fight with Barkley, with every. I think Oakley fought. I think he's fought everybody. I mean, Robert Parrish took a forearm and smashed him over the face, and neither guy got ejected. That's what basketball used to look like. 
like he would he wanted to he, he wanted to get into it uh, and then he had that ridiculous i mean he was a great three point shooter too you yeah. know yeah. Uh, back in the day like that was a great three point shooter mm-hmm. but that dude did not care he was going to protect isaiah at all times it ne- it didn't matter like he was always going to protect isaiah thomas and that dude is a tough he was a t- couldn't fight a lick it looked like but he could, he was a tough motherfucker who didn't care if he got hit He's the definition of a henchman. Now, this one's going to be funny to you because I sent you a video of this guy earlier today. You never saw him really have to get into it on the court because everybody knew. James Johnson and I thought did it, not have to blink. That's why I was going to be like, I, was, I had him, but I was like, he didn't really get into it, but it's because nobody. He didn't have to. Everyone knows James Johnson James Johnson's background. He's a professional kickboxer. He's an undefeated professional kickboxer. There was a story, and it's funny because the video came up today on my feed. I was like, wait, I gotta what? James Johnson beat the shit out of a teammate when he played for the Heat. He beat the shit out of the teammate. I didn't know that. But hey. Udonis Haslam, Mike Miller, and, and Bam out of bio were on a podcast. Hey doing a podcast, and Bam is telling the story, and UD is telling the story about how James Johnson had a quick twitch. You could not, once you, once, you, once you hit that switch, you could not switch it back. He got into it where a teammate called him a bitch. They would not say who it was, but I'm going to presume it was Hassan Whiteside. I'm like going that. to presume, because I know Goran Dragic would not have done that. No. I know Dion Waiters would not have done that. UD clearly didn't do that, and Bam definitely didn't do that. So I'm going to figure it's a guy of size yeah. and a guy with a mouth. Yeah. And Hassan Whiteside was a complaining-ass bitch himself and always whining, and I have a feeling it was Hassan Whiteside. I don't remember him having black eyes or a busted lip or a busted nose or whatever, but I'm going to tell you right now. They said he called him a bitch. He said, I got you. I'm going to see you after practice, and he whooped his ass next to the locker room. For 15 minutes. <laughs> it was, they said it was <laughs> good night. Like Thank just, you. and had him sniffling and crying. And then they hugged it out like within the, the, before the day was done. And it may have been over with for James Johnson. Probably was it. Maybe that's why Hassan Whiteside was no longer with the Heat very long. I mean, James Johnson left eventually. But there was a story about how James Johnson did, a, did an up kick to get the ball from out of the rim. Like a, like a karate kid kick. Yeah. I'm not. And, and and Bam said that's going to be my teammate for life. Hey, remember Serge Ibaka? Yeah, he grabbed James Johnson or James. I'm sorry, James Johnson may have grabbed him, and then Ibaka turned around. Is like, oh no, and he was like, bop, bop. I, I, but James Johnson would beat the brakes off of anybody in the NBA. They said, in a fight. Jeff T said when it was at Georgia Tech, <laughs> they had an issue, and they were like. Man, no man. So, James Johnson, while he never had to really be a henchman in the NBA, it's because everybody knew that they did not want to get the shit kicked out of them. Nobody. And Udonis said, "I tried to stop him, but once it switched, I let him, let him go, let him do what they got to do." Because I'm, because I'm, because Udonis has them. Udonis has them. Might be a tough motherfucker. But James Johnson would have put him in the dirt too. <laughs> so that's my five. Well, I think that was a colorful one. So shout out to all the henchmen and the fighters slash psychopaths of the NBA. We all love you.